It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. This show is 5.45 Live. Joe, what do we got coming up on deck here tonight? All right, tonight, jumper extraordinaire Spencer Knickerbocker at Harris Hill. The torch is lit on the Winter Carnival, and a man is found dead stuck in a window at Mad River Glen. We'll make sure we get all that to you uh, in this 15-minute span. Uh, we're going to try and lock it down uh, before the hour of 6 so you can switch over to the regular nightly news. But uh, until then, hopefully we've got your undivided attention. So stick with us here on 545 Live. <laughs> Welcome back to this February 17th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. Uh, we've got until 6 p.m. Hopefully we can uh, get you all the headlines we just promised and more. That's footage of a uh, shot last night by Joe Bushy uh, of a dumpster outside the general store when it caught fire. You can find plenty uh, of local video news in between 545 Live broadcast by subscribing to Joe's personal news channel, Brattleboro News, all at one word. And it seems like you've been having some fun with that there, uh, Joe, getting uh, yeah. as much you know posted it. as possible. Um, you know it. And then uh, often we can snip it in here as part of the show, but it goes up there first uh, kind of. With only three days a week now, we got to have something to supplement the in-between the times, right. especially uh, the middle of the night when I'm sound asleep and you're out on the scene. <laughs> so, right. All right, uh, I'll let you kick off the stories here. All right, Roland. <clears throat> all right, today, 53-year-old Brattleboro resident Rhonda McCarran pleaded not guilty earlier this week to charges of assaulting an officer stemming from her January 7th arrest where she allegedly kicked Brattleboro PD officer Joshua Line in the groin after being taken to a holding cell downstairs at the station. In the affidavit, Line wrote that, quote, McCarran was climbing the jail cell bars and licking them. She would also take water out of the toilet and fling it across the cell and the floor outside the cell. All right, at the scene of the arrest, uh, several individuals reported that McCarran was highly intoxicated. She faces up to two years in prison. Next, uh, the ski-related deaths continued this week, uh, though the latest tragedy occurred off the slopes. The Brattleboro Reformer is reporting that yesterday morning, state police discovered the body of an unidentified man stuck in a window between offices at the Mad River Glen ski area in Faston, Vermont. Uh, despite the strange circumstances, uh, the police do not suspect foul play. And uh, we'll uh, keep you apprised of that information um, as we get it, and hopefully we do get some more information for you. All right, moving on to lighter fare. Uh, the town uh, for weeks has been talking up the international ski jumping competition set to kick off this weekend on Harris Hill with snow conditions better than ever and jumpers from around the world gearing up. Uh, the event promises to be a good one. Joe, uh, earlier today you were out on the hill to talk with local jumping sensation Spencer Knickerbocker right. about the competition. Last week they were making snow I think five days and then we spent the early part of this week shoveling a lot of the snow off the tower because right. they had a little too much and now uh, we're kind of scurrying to make sure there's enough on the tower now. Well, thanks very much for your time today, Spencer, and we certainly look forward to cheering for you tomorrow and through the weekend. Are you jumping both days? Yep, I'll be jumping all weekend. Awesome. Well, we'll be all out here rooting for you, that's for sure. Great, thank you. Thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. See you soon. Good luck. In addition to the jump this weekend also marks the beginning of the Winter Carnival in town. Just hours ago, the torch was lit across the street to mark the commencing of the town-wide festivities. As a matter of fact, just a few minutes ago, actually. Indeed. For the carnival's complete schedule, which broadcasts uh, snowmobile rides, pancake breakfasts, and junior Olympics visit, Brattleboro Winter Carnival, all one word, dot org. All right, next, at his press conference earlier this week, Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin announced that the state uh, has received an additional $2.2 million from the Vermont Community Development Program to help fund affordable housing, economic development, and other local projects. I don't think there's a better way to invest federal dollars than this program. So. That's why the president's supporting it in his budget. That's why Senator Leahy, Senator uh, Sanders, and Congressman Wells will fight so hard for it. It's a great thing for jobs and job creation in Vermont as well as our downtowns. Combined with federal assistance from, from HUD's Community Development Block Grant Program, the money will total $20.5 million for the state's planned development projects. 
And to wrap the headlines for today, Senator Bernie Sanders took United States Secretary of the Treasury Timothy Geithner to task earlier this week over plans to again divert money from Social Security. We are diverting hundreds of billions of dollars into the, from the Social Security Trust Fund. Now, we did that in the last two years. What will you guys are saying that this is the last year you're going to do that? You always have to worry, uh, can people give up and commit themselves to give up a tax break that exists? We have a lot of experience with people unwilling to give those up. But this has to be a temporary tax cut. Video off of uh, Senator Bernie Sanders' YouTube channel. And uh, if you want to stay in touch with your Congress, subscribing to his channel and the governor's channel, they have an, an A-game media team putting clips up constantly. Uh, you know, if you don't have time to go on uh, BCTV and watch the entire press conference or, uh, you know, C-SPAN and watching Bernie, they do put up some, some key right. clips. Uh, <clears throat> subscribe to it. You'll get notified the way we do. Um, they, they really clearly have invested a lot in putting this media up. Uh, getting in touch with their constituents that way, and it's a great Let me tool. Get the message out. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, what do we got to do? Traffic, weather, we'll try and uh, start there. Of course, big weekend coming up through uh, town uh, here, and so hopefully. Um, Traffic will cooperate at least a little bit. We've got it up on the flat screen behind us. I can put it up on the screen as well here so we can take a look at what's going on in downtown. Uh, the big news is no red in the High Street to Canal Street area. Now, normally red represents standstill traffic. Um, orange means traffic is heavily congested, though it is moving, and green is good to go. If you're going north on Putney Road, you're all set. Um, or if you're on 91, the rest of it looks like uh, it is moving. I don't know, Joe, we were looking at this, and uh, this perhaps is the first time you ever questioned the accuracy of our high-tech traffic report powered by Inrix and Beat the Traffic as you just came up through downtown. Pretty clogged when I just came through just now, but uh, it might have cleared up. Who yeah, knows? who knows? You know? uh, this has proved itself uh, highly accurate in the past. So, Stranger uh, things have happened. Uh, it's, it's hard to believe that there'd be no red in this uh, entire entire graph. Um, but uh, that's that's the way it looks right now. So uh, hopefully it'll stay that way. If you need to get through downtown, now's the time. All right, uh, Joe, we just got to wrap up wet with uh, some weather here as well. I'll get that up on the screen Oof, for people. The weather's amazing. Yeah, it's uh, been pretty pretty unreal. Now uh, we have heard we heard from Betsy Farley uh, uh, yesterday that uh, despite really some are calling it unseasonably warm temperatures. Um, and why wouldn't they? Uh, the snow at Harris Hill has never been better. They've been working overtime to make snow. We heard from Spencer <coughs> Knickerbocker that uh, they're all pitching in and uh, shoveling snow around there, making sure that it's uh, going to work out. So uh, we can uh, hope, hopefully guilt-free enjoy the weather, uh, knowing that they've got it under control up on the mountain. It's going to be a good weekend for the jump. It might be a little bit muddy in the field, but they're they're accustomed to that. So yeah, uh, uh, it's Vermont. So. Well, I'll, let you, I'll let you take a stab at the, uh, the the basic forecast here, and hopefully I can get it up on the screen. All right. Well, it looks like uh, clear for tonight with a low of 25. Hopefully it'll be enough to set a little bit of an ice, uh, ice uh, surface to that uh, uh, field out there. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and 45 degrees, a low of 22 tomorrow night, and back up to mostly sunny Sunday and a high of 40. Out of the next 10 days, every day is in the 40s except Monday, which is 37 for a high. So... Uh, we're going to be headed into spring in no time. Hard, hard to imagine. but uh, Winter probably will arrive sometime in April. That's so. right, end of March. That should be uh, <laughs> when, uh, yeah. Right. All right, well, let's see. What else have we got to talk about before we go? That's uh, about all oh, I can think of. Oh, we got uh, yeah. skate park jam. Let's, uh, let's roll, uh, roll a little, a little bit, bit more that. off the calendar. And before we wrap, yeah. um, of course, we mentioned Harris Hill and the Winter Carnival already, but there's plenty of other local events uh, going on this weekend, uh, including the second annual Winter Carnival Skate Jam, which will be held this weekend at the Boys and Girls Club, 17 Flat Street, Saturday, February 18th, from 3 to 7. Joe, you've been uh, involved in the skate park's previous uh Ventures, including uh, some great footage from the summer when they had uh, uh, the par partook in an international skate day. You got Daryl Pillsbury on a skateboard. Even this one yeah. promises to be pretty fun. They get some great prizes. It sounds like. Um, we do for sure. We're going to have a skate jam contest. It'll be from three to seven at the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, come on down, have a great time, support the skate park, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all down there, whether you skate or not. Come on down, learn more about the skate park and what uh, skateboarding is all about. And uh, Bring a skateboard, bring a helmet, and uh, there'll be some great prizes, including skate decks and T-shirts and hats and other things. And 
we look forward to seeing you down there. Absolutely. Uh, and if you're in the hunt for more good local programming, you can watch the latest BHS TV morning news advisory broadcast from the high school at 630 right here on Channel 8. Um, and skip two hops up the dial to Channel 10 for a 645 broadcast of the latest Sa uh, Bernie Sanders report, his uh, report in full. All right, that's about all we got. Full lit, everybody. Thanks for checking in with us. But remember, we'll be back Monday with uh, footage from 2012 Harris Hill. We'll recap that. Uh, some more on the Wyndham County Heat Fund and our latest special feature with Mr. Bushy here on the inner workings of his brain as he analyzes our community, plus traffic, weather, and all the usual shenanigans. We'll do that on Monday. All right. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, we'll be back Monday. But in the meantime, I'll say what I often say right around this time every day, and that is for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. Night, everybody. It's an Olympic-sized hill, so you got to be prepared. Yeah.